Hey everyone, this is Shua Fan, application engineer from Sontec. Behind the camera today, we've got Chris Irasi, the marketing manager. Hey Chris. Hey. So today we're here in Coronado Island with San Diego downtown in the background. And we're here today to talk about the Castaway CTD system. So the Sontec Castaway CTD, what is it? What does it do? When and why you'd want to use it? So let's just get started first by talking about the CTD itself. Uh, CTD stands for conductivity, temperature, and depth. So that's what the castaway measures. Um, conductivity is recalculated into salinity. And with those three parameters, you're going to get profiles or casts of your CTD uh, data. So we've got sensors here in the castaway through this flow cell in the back. And inside here, you'll see the conductivity sensors as well as uh, a little temperature probe and your pressure sensor is inside. Uh, so along with that, um, what else do you get in the box when you order a castaway system? You'll see this little container here that includes this little black thing. That's the Bluetooth dongle. Uh, you're gonna connect to the castaway using Bluetooth. So there's no you know, extra cable. You don't have to open the system or anything like that. Um, so you'll use this to connect, download data, um, do firmware upgrades, that sort of thing. Uh, you'll also get some batteries. The castaway runs on two AA batteries. So we've got some spares here. Um, we also have a USB dongle here that contains the, the software as well as the manual. So along with that, you'll also see this magnetic stylus. Uh, this is what you'll use to push these castaway buttons and control it in the field when you're looking at data, when you're trying to make a cast and that sort of thing. Uh, here's a field tip for you. If you do end up losing this for whatever reason when you're in the field, don't forget that you do have a spare dongle that's in the battery cap of, of this castaway. So once you unscrew the battery cap, you're gonna look for a little black circle that looks like this. And this is what the spare dongle looks like. So don't forget that for whatever reason, if you lose your normal magnetic stylus, you do have a backup if you're in a pinch in the field. All right. So today I've got the castaway hooked up here to a fishing rod. Uh, this is usually what I like to, to use the castaway with. It makes it super easy to lower it, especially from you know, higher up. Uh, if you don't need that sort of height, uh, if you're on a low boat or that sort of thing, you can you know, use a simple hand reel, dive reel, that sort of thing, or even just pay out the string by hand. Um, please just make sure to tie off the end of the string if you are doing that. We have seen, unfortunately, some customers losing their castaways that way, so just please be careful and tie off the ends if you can. Uh, let's see, so along with that, uh, let's talk about when and why you'd want to use the castaway. Uh, so if you're a researcher or a scientist, you're probably used to CTDs, taking CTD measurements, and you're interested in the raw data profiles up and down. So you can use the castaway for that sort of thing. Uh, if you're a hydrographer and you're doing bathymetric surveying, so you're interested in soundings or depth, uh, you've probably had to correct the sound speed or get an accurate sound speed in order to correct those depths. Now, if you're, uh, for example, using the M9 as a river discharge measurement, um, you might not have thought about correcting the sound speed. So let's talk about when and where you might want to actually use um, the castaway to correct for sound speed. So when you're in a body of water like the one behind me here, uh, you're probably going to see some heating at the surface from the sun and some cooler water towards the bottom. And we're also in a salty environment. This uh, San Diego Bay here is connected to the ocean and we probably have some differences in terms of uh, gradients in the vertical with temperature and salinity. So when we have a situation like that, um, general rule of thumb is that if you have a five degree Celsius, or that's about a nine degree Fahrenheit change in temperature, you're going to see about a 1% change in your depth measurement when you're using acoustics like this pointing downwards. All right, that also applies to salinity. So if you're looking at around a 12 unit change in salinity, you're gonna also see about a 1% change or difference in your depth measurement. And so in our case here, we've got both of those factors combined. And so they, they both combine to, to adjust your sound speed. 
So in situations like this, where you know that there's going to be some stratification, maybe you have like a freshwater input, um, you're near the coast and you have freshwater and saltwater mixing, or you have a very cold source of water coming into a warmer body of water, you're definitely going to want to consider um, using an adjusted sound speed as you go up and down the water column to correct your data measurements. Uh, so what's interesting, this is probably for the more physics geeks out there, uh, what's interesting is that when you use acoustics pointing downwards like this, because we use the Doppler shift, uh, the velocities that we calculate from this instrument are governed by what we call Snell's law. You've probably heard of it in you know, your high school physics class. Uh, it turns out that the velocity measurements when we have a downward facing ADCP are actually not affected by the temperature and salinity or sound speed adjustment. So you don't have to worry about the velocity measurements, but the depth measurements are. So that's the critical component. So if you're looking at soundings for uh, hydrogra hydrographic mapping or surveying, or if you're looking at a discharge measurement and you're looking at the cross section, which uses that depth, if you have any sort of big change in temperature or salinity, you wanna make sure that you're able to correct those changes using a CDD profiler. Now if you're using high pack, for mapping or River Surveyor Live for doing your discharge measurements, you're going to have one button that you can push and either take in those castaway data sets or actually connect to the castaway and download that data directly. And once you have that, that's going to automatically correct your sound speeds and give you the best possible measurement in the field. So please keep that in mind um, when you're taking your measurement. You know, when in doubt, if you do have a castaway handy, it never hurts to just take a quick measurement. I'm gonna show you right now how fast and easy it is. So, you know, when in doubt, just take it along and go ahead and take a quick cast. So with that being said, let's go ahead and show you how to take a cast with the castaway. Uh, so right now I'm going to turn the castaway on. Now I'm not gonna ask Chris to zoom in too much because the screen is actually hard to see using the video, but I'll just talk through all the steps that I see in the screen. So I'm gonna turn on the castaway system and the first screen I see is gonna give me options on um, taking a profile, looking at your measurements that you already have stored in here or taking a point measurement. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a profile and it's going to look for a GPS fix. It's got color indicators showing red to yellow to green and that indicates whether you have a proper GPS fix or not. So uh, hopefully you can see that green light here. That means that we're ready to go. We've got a good GPS fix and I'm just gonna hit go. And what it's gonna do now is after a couple seconds, the screen will turn off and that's really just to conserve the battery. So don't worry if you don't see the screen after a couple seconds. And at this point, we're ready to throw this in the water. Um, if you do have to make any modifications to your setup or that sort of thing before you put it in the water, there's no rush because the castaway algorithm knows when it's in the water versus the air. So it's gonna only take the water measurements. So right now I'm talking and, and um, using this time to, to show you this, but the castaway is going to know when it hits the water. So here we go, lowering it down, and now you'll see that I'm just up below the surface of the water. I'm gonna let the castaway hang out for you know, 10 to 15 seconds uh, just to equilibrate the electronics so that it comes up or down to temperature. And once I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna let it go, and we are starting our cast. So I'm gonna feel for the bottom there, and it's hit the bottom, and now I'm gonna start reeling it back up. Now you'll notice that I'm constantly moving. I'm not stopping at any point. And that's because that flow cell that I showed you earlier requires water to be flowing through it. Um, if you do have sitting water, standing water, or stagnant water in the flow cell, you do run the risk of the water actually being heated up a little bit by the electronics. So try to keep it moving. I like to try to you know, keep it moving at about a meter per second. So that's a couple feet per second as you're going up and down and try not to let it sit too much on the bottom or the top as you go. So once I'm done, I click that end button. It's going to, again, look for GPS fixes and satellites. And once it's able to do that, it's gonna actually take an average of the, uh, the first GPS fix and the last one.
So once it's happy with that, you see the green light, I'm gonna hit OK. And at this point, I'm actually able to review all of the data that I've just taken. All the profiles here show up, temperature profiles, salinity profiles, sound speed profiles, that sort of thing. If I'm happy with this, I can just turn off the system and uh, continue with my measurement or go back to the office. If I'm not happy with it, I know in, in the field in real time that I need to take another measurement. So I'll just go ahead and take another measurement. So, you know, that took all of 10 to 15 seconds to do that. So again, if when in doubt, if you're in the field, you've got a castaway, just go ahead and take a quick cast. Once you get back to the office, you can again, integrate this automatically using HiPAC or River Surveyor Live and use this data to correct all of your sound speeds. Uh, if you're looking at the actual Castaway software, and I mentioned HiPAC, I mentioned River Surveyor Live, but just know that the Castaway comes with, with its own software. And with the software, you're gonna be able to plot all the locations on a map of the profiles that you've gotten so far. You're gonna be look, looking at detailed profiles of temperature and salinity. Uh, the profiles that you'll see in the software are actually binned and filtered somewhat so that they, they look nice. Um, if you are you know, a researcher or a scientist interested in the raw data, that sort of thing, uh, you do have many options for exporting different types of data, including the, the raw data. So all of that is done through the Castaway software itself. Uh, and then finally, we've learned through the years that the Castaway has been a really useful tool in terms of teaching. Um, lots of people from you know, grade school, element, uh, high school to college have used it in their curriculums, uh, doing field work with, with kids. And if you're interested in that sort of thing, we actually do have a Castaway curriculum available on our website. Uh, it's geared mainly towards college or higher level high school uh, students. But if you are interested, again, you can find that at Sontech.com. Um, as always, you know, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, please contact us. We're always here to, here to talk to you. Uh, inquiry at Sontech.com. That's I-N-Q-U-I-R-Y at Sontech.com. And that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this live broadcast and hopefully see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.